Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Flight Images, and this Epson P5300 or P5370, as it will be in some markets, is a brand new one that Epson have lent me, kindly lent me it uh, uninitialized so I can actually show the setup process, uh, including removing all this blue tape. Now, um, uh, the guy at Epson who brought it round to me took a photograph of it as well showing the package it comes in. Now it comes on a pallet. This is too heavy for me to lift. I say this just so that you know what you're getting into if you get something like this. Um, I've got a photo showing when the P5000 that I've got, which is essentially mechanically probably the same printer with a yeah, few changes, but this is it being delivered outside my home. As you can see, you will need people to get it into your house and things like that or where you want it. Um, anyway, this is completely uninitialized. I have got the ink cartridges here. Now, the ink cartridges, I will weigh them once they're set up on this, but the ink cartridges do not come at full capacity cartridges. So uh, there are no, uh, I'm told at the moment, there are no actual inks in, in the UK for this printer at the moment. So I will do some initial testing until I first run out of ink, but I will be checking. But do note that you will at some point have to get some more ink for, for your printer. Maybe uh, a maintenance cartridge as well. Um, I don't know this for certain, we'll, we shall see. But anyway, I've taken them out of their packaging and I've given them a gentle shake. Now I'm I've got big enough hands to be able to do this. Careful if you decide to do all of them at once like this. They only need a gentle shake for a while, which I've done. Anyway, I'll put those there because we do not need those yet. Um, two books that come with it. Um, the safety instructions. Yeah, a um, big chunky book. And the setup guide. Do not be put off by the size of the setup guide. Uh, both of these are written in about, I think it's 462 different languages, which means that there are only a few pages for me of English in this that I need to look at. And essentially what they tell you to do is remove all the packaging, keep some little note here, uh, keep some of the packaging. Uh, there are some plastic clips and things inside. Uh, these are useful if you're shipping the uh, printer at some point. But in general, remove everything. Do not plug it in yet. When you've got everything removed and you're fairly sure you've got everything done, and I do know from experience that you need to go over it a few times, um, then you can switch it on, follow the screen instructions. That means loading up the inks. I'll then going to leave it for a while. So what you're going to see here is um, an edited um, bit of the process, just showing bits and pieces, the general idea. And then I'll show, once it's got the inks and set uh, put in, I'll show connecting it up to a computer and on a network and things like that. That's fairly basic. Uh, like many other Epson printers these days, you just go to epson.sn, put in your model number and follow the instructions. And do follow the instructions. Even if you've set up printers before and you think you know what you're doing, follow the instructions because these, I've, I do this often enough to know that they change little bits and it catches me out sometimes, such as on my Mac by accidentally installing the air print driver or something like that. And, uh, but anyway, first up, lots of this stuff to remove. Oh, uh, <laughs> It was suggested to me that I should make a separate video of just tearing off strips of tape um, and recording the noises for people. No, we don't do that sort of stuff on this channel. Um, so hard luck if you do like it. But anyway, I will, uh, don't worry, I will edit this lot out. And there are just so many of them. There is a guy whose job it is to do this. But anyway, let's get on with doing this. It's progressing well. Um, two things I would note, um, the label here is attached to the stuff that goes around the print head. You need to remove that. That includes bits you need as a little plastic clip thing you need to keep. And the ink cart covers. Now, when I press that, it opens up. The ink cartridges go in here. Now, oh, oh there's another piece of just as we're expecting more packing. Now, I have kept some bits of tape 
here, just stick them on there. And the reason for this is that when I set up the P5000, um, I set it up, uh, not here, but uh, set one up, and you do go through the process of putting the inks in, it goes through the ink charging. Now, I leant over the printer to see what was going on in here, and I touched this, and that opened. Now, if this opens during the setup process, the setup process goes, oh dear, what to do, uh, goes back to the start. Ended up, you can see, um, I'll show an example of it from when I set up the, the P5000. Two of the inks were used up much more than others during the initialization. So be very careful because I, I was curious to see if this had been, this is the same design as the P5000 as far as I can see. Uh, it opens very easily, but you don't want it opening most of the time. So I come across, whenever I see P5000s in offices and things, I often see them still with a little piece of tape making sure that these only open when you want to open them. Um, I say that because I've done it once before and I don't want to do it this time and waste another load of ink. But uh, there we go. Anyway, I will carry on doing some more of this. So, yep, even you open up bits and there are pieces of paper attached to blue tape as well. well well, there's another bit that's come off, a bit of packing. Uh, this is the paper cassette. Uh, there is a piece of plastic comes out. If you wonder what this is, this is if you have very large paper loaded in the paper cassette. This goes over the front of it and allows, keeps dust off. Now, I use on the P5000, I have it normally loaded with A3 plain paper because I got a load of it and I occasionally need to print on A3 uh, for maps and charts and things. Usually directions to get to a site when I'm photographing. I just print off a map and it's very easy. But A3, this is the paper tray and uh, oh, there's the extension bit. There we go, just take that. This is the output tray uh, with that. And I can see now inside here, I've got more bits I can just pull off, but uh, in terms of things that there are access to here, this is where you get to the second maintenance tank. Now you don't need to fit these. The second maintenance tank deals with uh, borderless overspray. Borderless is only on rolls though. It deals with borderless overspray. Um, the original tank in my P5000 is still there. It's been there for about seven, eight years. There's no sign of it filling. I just don't print borderless. I will show borderless printing because you can do it on roll. Well, you can on the 5000, so I assume you can do it on this. A lot of things I assume from the 5000 that I'm gonna have to check from, from that. But that's where that, uh, that maintenance cartridge goes. And there we go, get a few more of those bits out of there and uh, get those. But this is the paper cassette, it pulls pulls out, loads up paper. Um, this is where you set the size for the paper. Um, it is very robust, it works well. You can put lighter photo paper in here and it will work. So if you're printing off lots of 10 by eights, think this supports 10 by eights, then you should be able to put it in here. Certainly larger sheets you can get away putting in. Anyway, on with the plastic. All right, let's take this. We have a piece of string to remind you, just Pull that off there. And there, with its extra piece of blue plastic on it, is the, uh, or blue tape on the orange plastic, is the bit you should keep for shipping. So we'll just put that away somewhere because um, unfortunately Epson will want this back at some point. Now, there are loads more of these, and uh, it would appear there is a blue plastic cover over the print head. Um, I thought it was, I thought, what's this? I told you there are some differences between this and the P5000. Um, the chassis for this is P5000, which is an improved version of what was in the SP4900. I got reviews of these going back for a long while. So it's interesting to see mechanical change as improvements are made over the years. Uh, one thing I'll just note here, there's a serial number here. I see this is number 29. 
and there is a password. You will need that for accessing the web uh, handling of this. Now, in terms of uh, monitoring what the printer does, uh, this can be connected to the free Epson port software. Now, that's meant for commercial use. It's a bit of a faff to set up. Well, it's not that much, but yeah, it is. Uh, it will monitor your printer for you, monitor ink usage, and allow you to put costs for paper and things like that. So if you think of the sort of commercial features that you would expect on a big commercial printer, that are available on this. The, you know, the P900 and 700, I think, are also supported to some degree on the port software. Um, I haven't, it wasn't about when I set those up and when I test them. This most definitely is. So if you're concerned about costs, Costs. I will not be able to answer questions of how many prints can you get from a, from a you know, cartridge and things like that because I haven't got it here long enough. My testing will be so varied that I'll get no useful data for that. So sorry, I cannot answer that. But there is the Epson port software which you can look into to get for that. And I'll have a look at that when I do the review and get it set up properly. I'll have a look and see if we can get it. But that looks like all the bits there. I've just got to remove stuff from the back here. This is the roll holder. Uh, this flips up the uh, roll holder spindle. It's a spindle based one. You put the spindle in, you just drop the paper in, feed it through, follow the instructions here. But anyway, I'll be covering all of that in the details uh, of, of the review and other videos I'm going to do with it. Uh, there will be the my normal very long written review, but that will be supplemented with lots of videos as well, I hope, for as long as I've got it and uh, as long as the inks last. And one of the useful things about having it here, I'm filming this, by the way, not in my normal office where I've been doing the videos. This is where I started doing my videos. And I'm sorry for the slightly, slightly echoey sound, uh, but I'm in our kitchen. Uh, this has been given special dispensation to sit here over Christmas. And uh, it may well end up having a sheet put over it and some stuff on it, but I just make sure nothing that's going to damage it. Now, I can swing this round because this trolley's on wheels and get to various bits. There is a cable at the back here. This is a, a power connector that powers the drive unit for the roll paper. Uh, you don't have to connect it, don't unconnect it, just leave it as is. All the connections are around the back as well. Oops, there goes the saucepan. And various bits at the back, there are the connectors, Ethernet, USB. Um, I'll probably connect this one up on wireless, although I could connect it up on USB. One other thing I just mentioned whilst I've got it here, put this uh, roll spindle in there, close that. Uh, you can't detach this, this is fixed. Um, you, you can't take it off and save some space. There is a slot at the back here where if you use a straight through print path, media will come out before going through the printer. Uh, I've tested the P5000 with board. I know it prints on poster board and things like that. But do remember, if you're going to do printing via the straight through print path, it comes out the back before going in, particularly if you're doing larger sheets of something. There's also a panel here that you can remove uh, for dealing with paper jams and things like that. The usual bit where it's connected with the feed tray for the paper cassette. But anyway, I'll be covering all of that at some point in the review. But it's looking very close to being able to switch on. Well, that's it. All the various packing removed. I put the roll holder in. I've plugged it in, switched the on on the power socket, and this is where we find out if it works. Aha! Epson. Now this is, this is a touch screen, um, as opposed to the uh, screen you get on the P5000, which is a smaller screen and has control buttons. So this is a touch screen. First thing it's asking me is this language. And despite the temptation, because it's going back to Epson at some point, I'm going to put it in as English. It thanks me for my purchase. Ooh, I don't think so. Uh, date format. Let's have month, day, year. That's... Uh, no, I don't think we'll do that. We'll do day, month, year. I don't want to confuse people. Um, it seems to think that today is the 23rd. I think it's right, so we're okay for that. Time format, we'll have 24 hour. And the time, it's a couple of minutes slow, but we're okay with that. 
Now, there are a lot of bits of setting up this where you just have to do something and then wait for stuff to happen. Um, it has, as I say, the screens are nice, nice sharp screen. So we've got details here. It says install all ink cartridges with, um, with this printer and then close the cover to start initialization. So this is where we open. This is also where I discover a little bit of filler that I'd forgotten, something stuffed down the side here. So we'll open these. Did I say I was paranoid or not, or what? Let's just put that there. These are to shut them when I do it. Now, you don't have to install them in any particular order, but PK clicks in with quite a nice solid. You can see the mechanism that's used for that. Now we put that one in there. This one here is matte black. one is yellow. Now these are in the order they came out of the box. I do remember other printers where Epson put the uh, actually sorted the cartridges in order. So that's VM, Vivid Magenta. There's no black ink swap on this much as the P900. P5000 does have a black ink swap but it has more inks. Cyan. Light, or oh, what's that one? Light grey. We'll pop the violet in next to that. Uh, these are keyed, by the way. They do have little, um, they do have little sort of physical notches and lugs on them that stop you putting the wrong car in. So, uh, but even so, just taste a bit of care over it. Just got two more to do. Great. Now, in terms of printing, which ones run out first? Which are you most likely to have to replace first? I'm going to say the grey and probably the light grey will be the first to go. They tend to be used quite a bit. Certainly if you do, like I do, quite a bit of black and white printing, but even normally. So that's the Vivid Light Magenta. We have got them all in place. We'll shut that one. And as I said, only a little bit paranoid about messing it up this time. Put that there. And put that little bit of tape on there. It says preparing. This is the bit where, um, as they say in all good videos, time passes. Although very slowly when you're watching one of these things. What's the time? Oh, it's... It's 11 o'clock, um, just so I can make a note of how long this takes. But anyway, we will leave it and come back to it when it's done all its stuff. Now, it's making what sound like ink charging noises to me. I've heard a lot of these. I should note that when I switched it on, I went through all the process you saw just now. Uh, the print head whizzed about. The print head came over here and we got an error P something whatever error um, caught me by surprise so I forgot to note what it was. It says, however, switch off the printer. So I, it never got to this sort of whirring noise. Um, so basically I switched the printer off, opened it up, had another look to make sure I hadn't forgotten any packaging or anything like that. Um, and switched it on again. I had to go back through the date and everything set up takes a moment or two and here we go we've now got it is now working the print head was left over here it started up it drifted over here and then it sort of did some jiggling about as they do and it's now now I'll try and catch some of the noises and this is typically charging it tells me uh, initially initializing do not open any covers or turn the power off no those covers aren't going to open and it tells me that i have a remaining time of 15 minutes so uh, perhaps this time time passes yeah timer seems to be going down reasonable enough time since i'm in our other studio uh, better known as the kitchen uh, time for a cup of tea so there we go. Um, 
counted down, it got to zero, and nothing happened. There were no whistles, bells, or anything like that. I now have it saying it's ready to print. Um, I can do all the setup things, setting it up and stuff for that, but that is the printer. Um, it's done. Now, it's showing that the maintenance cartridge which is in here, the main one, is half full uh, or half empty. And it's showing all of the inks at about half level. So I'll, I'll weigh them when I finish this, uh, weigh a, a, an ink cart or two to try and work out how much. But if that's accurate, um, means you've probably got about 40 mil of ink per cartridge to do for printing. That's quite a bit of printing, I hope. Um, we shall see. Um, it looks, yeah, it's, it's a touch screen. It's got various bits. I shall now have a look at this, get the computer out and uh, come back just to do the next bit of the setup. Um, which is usually pretty easy. Right, I've uh, got my trusty old MacBook Pro. It's quite an old one, but it works because I've gone to Epson.sn. I've put the model number in. Uh, fortunately, it does know that there is a P5300, so well done, Epson. You have a printer and hopefully the software to drive it. Uh, preparing the product, it says see the manual, which, as I've said, is a few words that says switch it on, follow the instructions, load the ink and, and wait, and that's it. It's done. Um, you know, printer setup does get easier, uh, I've noticed over the years, uh, certainly for larger printers like this. And uh, installation and connection setting. Well, I'll click on the download there. It's detected Mac. I'm just hoping that there is a driver new enough for this. There we go. It's downloaded a, a file, image file, which I'm just going to start off. There we go. Epson installer. Run that. Yes, I do trust Epson on this instance. Things happen. Obviously, I'll edit this down to make it a little bit more concise rather than just have video of downloads and things like that. Wants my password. The usual license agreement. Um, sets up the product. If you're already using it, yeah, still run this application. Yeah, it hasn't been written. Okay, yeah, go on. I'm going to accept the license. Have I read an Have I read the software license? Um, that's, yeah. Of course I've done it. Allow collection of software usage information. Um, because I do a lot of testing and verify, I never bother with this. It just installs extra bits and pieces. I don't have a, a particular problem with it, but um, I just, as a matter of principle, never do it. So there we go. Next. Make sure the printer is turned on. Yes, it is turned on. Connect. What should we do? Wireless, wired, or USB? I'm going to live dangerously and connect wireless using Wi-Fi auto connect. It's, it's a little thing coming up, checking the system environment. Um, yeah, connect via wireless. Click on that. Now, make sure the printer is on. There are no messages, etc., etc., etc. Now, select on the home screen the little printer, little network icon, which is that one. Select router, select setup. Select router, start setup, others. And then I can go Wi-Fi auto connect, run the software on the computer, then start setup. Uh, select, select setup, which is that one, and then click next here. Your printer control panel should look like this. It does. It says connecting to wireless router. Connect and it wants to know whether to connect to the... It's found the network that this is on. There is a protocol that I don't know what it is. Years since I worked in IT at this sort of stuff. So, yes. Uh, yes. And it says now set up as in progress. Once again, time passes. Where's that tea I made? There we go. 
special printer installer T. Yeah. Now I'm hoping since this is a brand new printer, never been set up before, that this will all work. I know sometimes if you get a printer that's already set up, uh, the involve, it's a bit more involvement in setting things, but you should still go through the Epson SN route. Here, go to the website, it downloads, installer, sakes you through everything. Whoa, select, what's it saying? Setup is in progress, please wait. I'm not going to do anything until it tells me. Or perhaps I should. This is one slight problem with these. You think, well, oh, this has happened. Do I have to do anything here? Or do I follow the instructions here that says, please wait? Well, since nothing is happening here at the moment, I'm just going to leave this. Now, this is one of those bits that uh, you think, well, this says this, this. Is this telling me to do anything? No, it isn't. It just says select connection um, and it's got wireless on it. So here we go. Current IP address is worth waiting. Current IP address for the product is set as below. Click change to change. I'm not going to worry about the IP address. I'll take a dynamic configured IP address over the network. Normally with printers, um, I assign um, you know, permanent IP addresses on our local network. That's because we've got a full local network here with a router, with um, servers and all kinds of other stuff on it. Um, it runs a DNS system as well. So that's far more complex than most people ever bother with. It's a hangover from the fact I used to work in IT for a while. It's what paid for me to take up photography. Um, but we'll just click on next here and not be tempted to just tinker. I can tinker later once it's all work up and working. Uh, select the software to install. We will have download the software. Now it's only downloading a bit of this because this computer here is one I use for testing. Um, whenever I go places, this has been for years. This has got my profiling software. It's got all kinds, it's got my test images on it, all kinds of stuff. And for those of you who think you need the latest, newest kit, this is a 2010 MacBook Pro. Um, the battery is losing a bit of oomph now that, you know, that it's, it's on its second battery. But you do not necessarily need the latest and greatest kit. Um, I may get a replacement for this at some point, but there is no pressing need as yet. Um, I've got the Mac Studio that I got to replace my uh, machine upstairs, and I'll be doing some more stuff on that, and I will be doing connections from other Mac systems and looking at software, all sorts of stuff. But at the moment, we're just waiting for the printer driver to be installed. Incidentally, that screen that popped up here um, that I said, was this something I had to do? Was it not? I've left it. And at a certain point, it said returning to home screen due to inactivity timeout. So leaving it alone was fine. Uh, this is going through all its dr installing drivers and everything else at the moment. This just tells me it's ready to print. Incidentally, this computer, although it's got feet on, well, has some of the feet are missing now, um, it's on a magazine sitting on top of this. This plastic is relatively easy to mark. Now, the, the difference between the 5000 and this one is this plastic is different. This is sort of slightly bumpy effect plastic, similar to what you get on the P900 and that. It's already, and I've had done hardly, it's already got finger marks and things all over it. The window on the top here, it marks easily. The plastic, if you're not careful, so this is being metal, I'm standing it on a magazine just to make sure. Um, you know, as I have said before, do not use your printer as a stand for teacups. Um, and other things as well. Uh, I think tea would do this more harm than this would, but uh, we're not going to try it.
after all the, the bits and pieces, we get to the add printer stage. Now this is the bit, because I'm using a Mac, I know there is always the danger of accidentally selecting the AirPrint driver. Now I've got a video about what to do if you've accidentally selected the AirPrint driver for your printer. Normal symptom of that is suddenly nothing seems to work. Uh, a lot of um, settings that you expect to be there aren't there in your printer driver. So um, I've just got uh, this here. It's going to add the printer. Let's have a look what it's got. Do have a look at the instructions here. It says on which operating system you're using. Obviously this is Mac, so it tells me the same for Windows. Make sure to follow the instructions and actually read what it says. It says here for the newer stuff, Monterey, no, we're not using that. Um, yeah. And there are detailed instructions for it. Have a look at them. It is people just rushing through and doing it that most, certainly why I did it, most likely causes the AirPrint driver to be accidentally installed. So I want to do add a new printer here. Let's add a printer. And it comes up with a list of printers. It finds various things. We've got all assorted stuff around here. But what I want is the Epson SCP5300 series. And I'm waiting for this to pop up. And it says at the bottom, use Epson, P50, uh, Epson SC-P5300 series. Now I wait for this to happen. I will now add that. And it's adding the printer driver. We now have a printer. And this is the important bit. It says kind Epson SC-P5300 series. So that's 5370 in the US and presumably other numbers elsewhere. But the word air print does not appear anywhere on that screen. So that suggests all is fine. I can close that. Please wait. Updating the firmware. Now this often happens with a brand new printer. In fact, I would be astounded given this is printer number, what was it, 2939, if there wasn't updated software between when this was manufactured and shipped over to the UK. Epson got it, Epson bought it over here. So uh, I'm going to do a firmware update. It's going to check that. It usually takes a minute or so. It downloads stuff. It has to download the software into the printer here. The printer checks everything is okay. It will then switch off and restart with the new software in it. Um, for a brand new printer like this, absolutely, if you see new firmware coming in, update it. Um, after a few years, you know, things are less likely to change. This is a very early version of the printer. Um, I'm going to suggest that even you know, other, even if you get this, if you're looking at this, I'm, this is uh, Christmas 2023. If you're looking at this in six months, a year or so's time, and you get the update firmware, still do it. Definitely worth doing. Now it tells me the connection security cannot be identified. Yes, I'm, I'm going to just okay that. Um, I'm fairly happy with the status of our network here. Please wait, do not turn off your product or computer or the product may malfunction. Yeah, this is one of the bits that if you do this wrongly, it is possible to brick printers, but I render them completely useless. Um, it needs the password. This is the bit where I mentioned that I need the password. Now let's have a look. The password is in here on a sticky label. So let's just pop that in. Well, nothing's happened. So I'm going to assume that it's accepted the password. Oh yeah, we're getting a progress bar. Preparing for firmware update, so obviously things are working. Let this run through and it will restart. Updating firmware, do not turn off the power. The printer will restart when the update is complete. If the power is turned off during the update, the printer could be damaged. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So this is now the actual firmware being updated. There's a little progress bar along the bottom here, which tells you. It took about five minutes for the firmware to be updated and uh, it's switch itself off switch itself back on 
and uh, it's now coming up about ready to print. Its wireless connection seems okay, which is pretty good really given there is a the, uh, transmitter. This one is picking up is just in the room above. So uh, there we go, ready to print, all the usual stuff. Now what's happening over here? Not a lot, it doesn't seem to have caught up yet. It's probably waiting for this to, to do its stuff. All the normal whirrings and stuff you get when printers start up. There we go. It's jumped ahead. There we go. Thanks for buying. Please register your Epson product. Ooh, shall I register it? No, no, probably not. Um, we'll just skip that one. Your product is ready to use. Finish. And there we go. Um, it is now set up. What I will do just close that, is load a sheet of plain paper. There's, let's see, good reasons I normally put this into the tray down the bottom here. And here's the tray, the cassette. We'll pop that in, just like loading, loading your favorite photocopier. Put that, push that, there we go. Ready to print premium glossy sheet? I don't think so. Plain paper. Paper cassette, that's got plain. Whoa, at last. Um, the 5,000 I've got upstairs, I use certain things. And the moment you do something that you're not familiar with on a new printer, shows that even with lots of experience, you can mess things up. Now, what am I trying to do after all of this? All I want to do is print a nozzle check. So we'll go to maintenance. Now, I notice there isn't a nozzleless ink uh, maintenance check as there is on the P5000. That's because there's a different print head. Pre P5000 has a very distinct, it, has, it can do no, um, paperless nozzle checks. Uh, this one, I wasn't expecting it and it has confirmed it. But anyway, let's just print that. Paper source, paper cassette, there we go, start. It sounds exactly the same as the 5000. That means it is much noisier than the P900. Uh, if you want this, um, you have to accept that when it's printing, it's going to be quite noisy. Uh, I, I know this from the 5000, there is no difference. It's part of it, and there is a vacuum paper system that is holding the paper in place and various things. So printing, it says it's printing, it's nothing's happened yet. So just see what, what happens here. Paper has loaded, so it's on. As I say, in your own time. Oh, here we go. One nozzle check. I declare this printer open. Uh, we'll just say it is, everything is fine from that, so it doesn't need to do any cleaning. I would hope not. Uh, there we have all ink channels seem to be going quite well. Um, I would with the P5000, I make sure I run one of these checks quite regularly. Uh, with this, um, it should be much more like the 900, so you don't need to be quite so concerned with using it absolutely every day or that regularly. Um, something I will look at, but anyway, the important bit is it's working. So there we go.